Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're all doing well. Really good, fit, healthy, you know, going on with your lives. And uh, good to have you back here. So, in today's tutorial, we'll be learning to make some simple animation. Uh, I think it's going to be a pretty quick tutorial with some cubes and rotation. So, uh, this is the preview. So, pretty simple to make and uh, let's get started. So, the first thing I want to do is I want to go to my render settings and make sure that my height and width is 1280 by 720. And then we want to go and we want to choose a cube. And we want to set the X, Y, Z size to 25 each. We want to add a fillet and uh, set the fillet radius to 1 probably. Give it a little bit of rounding, not too much. Okay. And then we want to go and we're going to choose a cloner. We're going to drop the cube inside the cloner. And then we want to go into object and we want to choose a grid array. Okay, so we have something like this. Okay, so now how this is going to work is we're going to keyframe the size over here so that it, you know, it comes in and it goes out, which gives us the animation. So for the first frame, I'm going to set that to zero. And actually, let's go create a material, a simple material. Now, we want to keyframe the color as well. So let's uh, start off with some basic colors. So I'm going to go for a bright blue over here. And I'm going to go to the reflection and choose a Pruna with a brightness of 15 and the mix strength to uh, 30. Okay. And let's just uh, drag it on the cube for now. So here on the first frame, we want to go and click on stopwatch for size. Uh, I'm going to go and take this and I'm going to drop it to 20 frames. Okay. And then we want to go and uh, to 40 frames. And in the cloner, we want to set the size X to 100. Click on the stopwatch. And then we want to go further to around uh, 80 frames. We want to click on the stopwatch. And then at 90 frames, we want to set this to 100 and 100. So if you look, we have it opens up and uh, it becomes big. So let's make up a camera. So we're gonna go and we want in the object we want to set the focal length to 50. And uh, here in the coordinates we want to set minus 70 for the heading and minus 10 for the pitch. We want to uh, set the x to zero. We want to set the y to zero. And if you get away from our camera and see, we have it uh, putting it over there. So we want to move it like that. Set this to zero, probably. I'm going to go here and set the Y to say something around 250. 50. Let's see, where is that looking? Okay. So probably we bring it down. And uh, then we can give it a little bit of rotation like that. And we can move the X as well. Probably something like that to say something around 80. And uh, X we can set that to 800. Okay. So if you go through the animation, it opens up. And it becomes big. So now let's uh, keyframe the rotation. So here, let's go to the cloner. So you want to... Click on the stopwatch for the H, P, and B rotation. And we're going to go to 140 frames. So let's extend the timeline. So we want to set the banking to say something like uh, minus 60. H rotation will be minus um, 720 probably. And the P rotation will be say around minus uh, 10. So uh, let's make a keyframe so let's just go through this and see how it looks so rotation and rotation and there we go I think I'm going to set this to minus 10 minus 30 probably okay so let's see ah 
Okay, so what we want to do is we want to set this the timelines to 300. Now, uh, at frame 140, after it comes to a still, we want to take the camera, we want to uh, set a keyframe, and we want to go to frame 300, and we want to zero out everything probably. Oops, zero, zero out, zero this out, zero this out, and uh, we can just move this a little bit back, and then we can hold the keyframe. So, how it looks is like that. And we want to bring this out a little bit more further, and then we can hold the keyframe. So, something like that. Or we can, uh, you know, probably set this to a thousand, and we can let's get away from the camera. And since it's facing the other way around, we can just, you know, set this to 180 degrees. And let's look into the camera. And since it is too close, oh, it's 1,000 is what we want. And let's make a keyframe and see how this looks. So first split, second split, and uh, whoa, we have a problem. So this is 290. So this is 180. Yeah. So let's play that from here. Yeah, so we can see it, you know, kind of going through that. Or probably we can uh, add a target. So choose a target type and we can just create a null and drop this null inside the target. And uh, so here it goes, it goes through and, you know, it comes out of that, like, you know, good, good looking animation. So I think I'm just going to go and uh, to here 140 and just drag this down actually. No, actually let that be as default. And we can take the cloner itself and uh, bring that down pretty much like that. Okay, so there's a good distance. Okay, now uh, we want to keyframe the rotation of the cloner. From 140 and here we're going to set this to say something around 10 we're going to set this to say around um, let's see minus 800 just a slight rotation and the banking we can set that to say around minus uh, 350 and we can uh, stopwatch so here after it eases it still rotates and we get a nice ending like that so let's look that up again Uh, next, we want to uh, keyframe. Uh, actually, we want to go and uh, choose the choose, click on the cloner, go to MoGraph Effector, and we want to choose a random effector. And in the random effector, we want to go and uncheck position, and we want to put on some rotation. So we can set this to say something on 200, 120, 140, just random values. Now the thing is. Uh, Let's see, uh, anything else? No. So the thing is, we do not want it to be random from here because it looks pretty bad. We want it to be random from around 140 frames. So we want to go to the effector, bring down the strength. We can click on a stopwatch. Probably want to take uh, this random and move it to 180 frames. Uh, 180. And then we want to go to the last frame and uh, we want to go to the random menu and set strength to 55. And also on frame 260, we can go and uh, set this down to 10. And on frame 220, we can give it uh, some other value of say around 65. So it gives it a lot of radiation. So if we go and we see the cube start, you know, taking shapes and uh, falls into place so cool yeah so we're done with everything pretty much so uh, let's just go to the color and uh, change the colors so on frame 60 we want it to be this color and then we're going to go to one frame 61 
and uh, we can change this to another color say uh, something like a red okay we can click on stopwatch and then we can go to 120 frames and we can click a stopwatch again to set that color so there's no changes over here and at frame 121 we can go and choose a darker or uh, let's say a uh, around something like a purple something like that and uh, we can okay and then I think uh, you can you can add how many more colors you want but uh, and maybe probably over here around uh, the 200 the frame we can uh, click on a stopwatch and here on 201 we can go and probably set this to a orange dark orange something like that and click on the stopwatch over there and uh, then when we go back so it kind of zooms in and boom there's a change color during the shift and you know it comes out like that so that is pretty much how to do the color change so let's get on with the lighting so I'm going to be using Grayscale Gorilla's Lightkit Pro and I'm going to be using a softbox so let's move away from the camera okay and uh, that is good so that is good for the first one and we can duplicate this and here we can set the Y to say something around 50 and uh, we can move the X to say something around minus 150 probably oops that's pretty too much let's set that to zero and then uh, so we can actually uh, pretty much do like that so probably say around 50 and uh, 60 oops 40 for the 35 for the y okay something like that you can bring this down a bit for down and then you can go and I'm gonna go create a overhead softbox so let's zoom out and see what we get I think uh, that's pretty much good enough for the lighting and also I'm gonna go and uh, choose a seamless flower by in the oops oh, it looks like we have two okay. go here and uh, can choose this uh, seamless floor okay and if we go in there and uh, we play it we hope that okay since it is going through we want to take the seamless floor and we want to bring it down completely down okay and in the seamless floor controls we want to set this to a darker gray and we want to select this to a lighter gray and let's just make a small render and see what we get so this is uh, looking pretty cool yeah I like it we can also go on head on and put on an ambient occlusion and anti-aliasing and set that to best one by one two by two and then uh, we can uh, make a quick render over here and see what we get So, um, looks like we're getting good reflections. And one more thing, if we, if you have time, you can go and choose global illumination. Set that to low. Set this to low, and uh, make a render, which will give it up more uh, brightness and more a realistic look. As you can see here, it looks pretty fantastic. So let me just wait this for it to uh, render up so I can show you the final preview so this is how it uh, kind of looks which is uh, pretty cool and uh, obviously we can go to the softbox settings and uh, oops the softbox settings and uh, we can go here and scene by camera we can delete that and 
that is pretty much it how to make this cute little amazing uh, cube animation so thank you guys very much for watching this tutorial please like share comment subscribe anything you would like me to make a video of or a tutorial of anything just please let me know drop a comment really appreciate it and uh, see you again in a future tutorial goodbye